final event in the 2002 Banks and Off-Road Championship was the Carnival City Casino 400, which attracted 79 entries in the special and production vehicle categories. Last year, when the region was turned into a quagmire by torrential rain, this year's Carnival City Casino 400 was destined to be a hot, dry, dusty affair. The Couple Club had laid out a tough route between Brackpan and Heidelberg, which incorporated sections of the Saker Boss Runt, and crews would be required to complete a 37-kilometer prologue on Friday, and three tortuous 137-kilometer loops on Saturday. As for last year, the production vehicle championship would be decided on the final event, with two crews sharing the joint lead, and one in with an outside chance. Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schalthammer hadn't won a race all year, but their consistency in the Ford had earned them enough points to share the lead. I've been racing for many, many years, and this is one of the tensest I've ever felt. I don't know why, but they say it, with time it gets better, but I don't know, it seems to be getting worse. But yeah, it is quite a tense time. But in reality, we've, we've got to come third. Uh, if Hannes, if the Nissen wins, uh, we've got to finish third, and then we've wrapped up the class championship. The overall championship, there's not a hell of a lot we can do in our position. Um, you know about controlling it that is because we, we need some of the other class D contenders to, to get in there and, and beat the Nissan so we've got to concentrate on our class championship that's what's important to us and important to Ford and, and the rest will hopefully just fall into the back. Duncan Foss and Mike Griffith had steadily gone about amassing as many points throughout the season and were also in line to win the coveted championship for Nissan. The only thing in our favour is that um, if we end this, this event equal on points, uh, we've won, we've had more class wins or wins overall than, than, than he has, so uh, that's a slight point in our favour, but uh, we just got to hope that um, Janelle and, and Hannes have a good run and uh, they, they rob the Ford of, of points and then we've also obviously got to do well and make sure that we can score enough points to just pip him. Three wins and two seconds had moved veterans Hannes Hobler and Richard Leake into contention for the overall and Class T titles. Well, we basically have to win the race. Uh, if the Ford's going to finish, I'm sure he's going to finish strongly. So uh, we'll have to try and uh, win the race. Uh, Janil or I become second, and the other one third, and the Ford fourth. Then we can win it by one point. Point. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. So we're going to definitely go for it. The special vehicle championship was also delicately poised, with one of three crews in with a chance for the overall title. Harvey and Stone had been super consistent and finished all previous events. Victory would give Harvey his third national title and Stone his second. But their biggest threat was Greg Dance, who had appealed against an MSA decision to strip him of his class points in two events due to there being insufficient starters. If we get the points uh, that we're, we're entitled to, we'll be five points ahead of uh, Greg Harvey and actually leading the overall championship. So we do have a certain margin, um, but uh, we've never raced with, with, with uh, the intention to hold back or to, uh, to use up the margin that we've got. We, we raced and, and uh, we raced to, to win, and uh, I think we've, we've proved that the whole year, and uh, we'd like to carry on with that success. The 37-kilometer prologue to determine starting positions for the main event included a 5-kilometer man-made section within the Carnival City Casino complex. Brothers Gerhardt and Lone Stupor C set the pace in the mobile Jimco and were three seconds faster than John Weir Smith and Jeff Minnett in the O'Hagan's Copenhagen Hotel Super Team Jimco, which ran most of the distance without brakes. <laughs> second time this season that special vehicles had dominated the prologue. Third fastest and the first production vehicle was the Nissan hard body of Hannes Hobler and Richard Leake, who were 15 seconds faster than R.P. Reinecke and Robin Houghton in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. The multiple former champions won the season opening Barbers Fund 500, but have not fared too well since. Fifth fastest were last year's Carnival City Casino 400 winners, Woolridge and Schalthammer in the Ford Racing Ranger. While the pair finished second on five occasions this season, victory had eluded them. Yes. 
1996, where father and son Bodo and Gary Berthold, who had done much development work in the locally designed and built commuter net bat, the Nissan V6-powered vehicle was a contender for victory. Brandon Harkus, one of the developers of the bat and track racing star Rechard Roots, were seven seconds slower than the Bertholds in the Iper Optics bat. The scene was set for a nail-biting battle between the rival bat crews. The revolutionary Roger Taylor-designed Toyota Hilux, with former Bankford touring car star Anthony Taylor at the wheel, had proven to be quick but unreliable in its debut since the Lexus V8 powered machine would start eighth. Reigning production vehicle champions Camille de Villiers and Francois Jordan set the ninth fastest time in the Nissan Hardbody. They got lost twice in the prologue and ended up one minute and 14 seconds behind Probler and Leak. Production Vehicle Championship co-leaders Duncan Foss and Mike Griffith were the first of the Class D qualifiers and rounded out the top ten in the Nissan Hardbody. Class S champion Greg Dows and Archie Rutherford were the fastest Class S qualifiers in the Nashua Mobile Race Co. While Class B newcomer Francois Smith outqualified the rest of the Class B field. Class E Championship contenders Hugo and Yarp de Brain and the Toyota Hilux were the leading qualifiers in the class, while the Class F honours went to Vainan Britz and Roy Clark in the SVM. Just over two minutes separated the top ten with special vehicles dominating, but the real battle would be between Ford, Nissan and Toyota for the production vehicle honours. Als we maar net ons pas rijden, wat ons, wat ons voor ons is gelukkig af niet in. Zoals we maar zien. Wat die carro. In pap wielen. Dat was altijd een surprise om elke draai. Dus we zijn maar net geniet. Being third overall and first in production, we must go for it. We must go for an overall win. Uh, to get a space between us and the Ford, we need the Ford to finish fourth, us to finish first so that we can win Class T, the Super Truck class. And uh, as far as an overall championship win, there is an outside chance. If we have a clean run and win, and the Ford has problems and drops back, and of course our teammate Duncan has problems and drops back, then we can take the overall a bright and sunny start to the day and not a hint of rain. Dust would be a major problem for crews, and poor visibility, especially in the opening stages of the race, would be a factor. As always, there were the last-minute preparations and informal chatter before the start of what promised to be a tough event. The 79 crews came under starters' orders at 8 o'clock, with Carnival City's Rod Walker flagging the field away. The Duplessis brothers had a huge advantage. Being first on the road meant a dust-free run. But Weir, Smith and Minute had other intentions and were hell-bent on getting to the front. Rob learned Leek were the first of the production vehicle brigade and immediately set off in pursuit of the leading special vehicles. The Nissan Hardbodies had won six of the seven events run to date, with Rob learned Leek and De Villiers and Jordan each having won three events. Rainer and Harton had had a frustrating season in the new Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser, but their perseverance and ongoing development of the vehicle were starting to pay dividends. Production Vehicle Championship co-leaders Woolrich and Schalthammer were in a confident frame of mind before the start and hoping for a repeat of their 2001 Carnival City Casino 400 win. The Bertholds started a mere two seconds behind the Ford and were already looking for a way past, but the Ford's four-wheel drive was an advantage in the slippery conditions. You're on board in the Ford Ranger. Enjoy the ride across the chessboard section. Brandon Harkness and Rechard Roots were next up in the bat, followed by Anthony Taylor and Henny Tostiecha in the Class T Toyota Hilux, which had suffered from reliability problems. With Khalil de Villiers and Francois Jordan out of contention in the championship, their task has been to test development paths for the Nissan Hardbodies 
been built in South Africa to contest the 2003 Dakar. De Villiers will have the honor of driving one of the works Nissans in the legendary event. Foss and Griffith had already clinched the Class D Championship in the Nissan Hardbody, and their main objective was to win the Production Vehicle Championship in only their second full year of off-road competition. They found the going a little slippery in the arena section. This off cost them some time and allowed Class S champion Greg Dars and Archie Rutherford to nip by in the Nashua Mobile Race Co. The Vormaran stunt-based Duplessis brothers had matters well under control and had opened up a healthy gap on the rest of the field. Weir Smith and Minutes won the Nissan Sugar Belt 400 and the Queen Motor Spares Tarka 400 and were aiming for their third win of the season. The choking dust did not help matters for the chasing crews, especially Hrobler and Leek, who wanted the overall lead badly, and to put as much distance between themselves and the championship leading Ford Ranger. On board the Castle Toyota Land Cruiser, Reineke and Houghton maintained a steady pace, and were fourth overall and second in the production vehicle category, as they headed south towards Heidelberg. The dust on certain sections of the route was appalling, and conditions were not conducive to maintaining a fast pace. The view from the cockpit of the Ford Ranger says it all.